Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here. Today we are taking a quick look at IEM Fall. You guessed it, we've got the final RMR for the Major, only the second EU RMR because of the wonderful COVID. Now what we're going to try and do in this video is give you a quick rundown of the outlook for the Major currently. So we're going to look at the RMR standings as you can see in front of you and just give you a quick overview of the scenarios facing the teams. Then we will take a look at the groups that have been drawn for IEM4 and I will give you my predictions for who I think goes through each group. Then I will move on to give you a quick rundown of what I expect the final standings to be for IEM Fall. And then at the very end, we will take a look at what this would mean for the RMR standings. Basically, what do they need to do to qualify? How I expect the tournament to go? What that means for major qualification and who will qualify for the major? Everybody with me? Perfect. We'll get stuck in then. Now, the initial thing to notice i'm just going to cut hyenas off so we can see this bit of the top here hyenas aren't relevant um just quickly to note hyenas and anonymo didn't make it to the im fall and therefore can't qualify they're already outside the qualification spots self-explanatory now as you can see here the top 11 in the rmr standings qualify for the major correspondingly the top 11 places at im fall offer rmr points now, I will pop a link down in the description to a HLTV article where one of my colleagues, Carbon Dogma, talks you through the scenarios in a little bit more detail. But just to touch the highlights for you, the top five are realistically qualified, right? The top quad five realistically don't need to do anything at this IEM fall to qualify for the major. They could crash out in groups and most likely all five of them will qualify. My final RMR standings, once I've, uh, I'll show you at the end where I, once I've totted up where everyone I think is going to finish, has the bottom place team. Hang on, let me just check. Qualifying for the major with 1,232 points. As you can see, that is less than Vitality have now. So I think even if these teams don't get any points out of this IEM fall, they probably qualify for the major anyway. That also probably is true for Big and Fun Plus Phoenix, but they would need more results to kind of go their way. And they would need kind of basically all of these kind of top 11 teams to finish in the top 11 spots. If these top 11 teams finish in the top 11 spots, then all of them qualify. I doubt it will be the top 11, but we'll move on to that. So to summarize, top five almost certainly qualified anyway. Top seven, so six and seven, Big and Fun Plus Phoenix most likely qualified and then down here they need to get a decent finish and in some cases have results go their way depending on the finish now the next thing we are going to do is we're going to take a look at each group and uh, make some comments on the group and predict who i think will go through now i know that in this graphic that you see here top two are the only relevant places it's actually top three that are relevant for placing so the top four go on to sort of the playoffs and then third place will go into a double elimination bracket to play off for ninth to 12th. Like I said, because the top 11 places offer our MR points and only the top eight go through to playoffs, we still need to decide out of the other third place teams who gets the qualification points. But don't worry, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Now, for Group A, I do not have any faith in G2 at the moment. I've got to be perfectly honest. I expect them not to go out of the group in top two. I expect that to be Big and Mouse Sports. This is mainly due to Big and Mouse Sports being... Big, Mouse Sports and G2 are clearly the best three teams in this group. They should secure the top three spots between them. Copenhagen Flames and Fun Plus Phoenix. We haven't seen huge amounts of Fun Plus Phoenix this year. I haven't really got a lot to go on to talk about how strong they are, but Copenhagen Flames, we have seen a lot of in Tier 2, and they seem a decent Tier 2 team. In best of ones, which is what the group stage is, they definitely can cause some damage. So I'm not writing Copenhagen Flames off to do nothing in this group. I expect them to pick up some wins. However, I think the strength of Big and Mouse Sports should be enough to see them out of this group at top 2. Having said that I don't have a lot of faith in G2, I do have faith in them to grab third in this group because even though they've lost all of their games against decent opposition since IEM Cologne, they have still shown that they can beat, for example, they beat MIBR in their blast group. I still think they've just got enough raw skill, even with Nico just going ham. I think he can 1v5 these teams down here and secure third spot for G2. So I expect it to be one and two mouse sports and big with number three G2. Now, moving on to Group B, 
Group B, I think top spot is a lock for Heroic. They are by far the best looking team in this group by a decent chunk. And then after that, I think it's actually quite a potentially competitive fight for the other two relevant spots in this group. Endpoint have looked really good in tier two. Sinners have looked really good in tier two and then looked pretty good at the ESL Pro League group stages. I think if things had gone different, they might have been able to make it out of their group. So I suspect it to be quite a tough battle between Complexity, Astralis, Sinners, and then potentially Endpoint playing spoilers for the other two spots. Obviously, the caveat with Endpoint is they're playing with their coach. If they're playing with Boris, I would actually give them every chance. Because they're not playing with Boris, they probably don't make it. Because of Complexity showing at Blast, and because of Cold Zero coming into the squad and looking pretty good, I am going to actually give Complexity the nod to maybe take second in this group. I know they did get 16 0 by FaZe on Ancient, but guys, it's a new map. Relax. 16 0s do happen every now and then, and it doesn't mean Complexity are a terrible team. They looked really good in that series until that final map. So I actually expect Complexity to maybe be the second strongest team in this group ahead of Astralis. I know that's going out on limb. I think Astralis have every capability of taking second in this group. The fact that Astralis is still using Zipnix instead of Glaive means they're still not quite at full strength. I'm going to give this one to Complexity by an edge, and I would not be surprised if Astralis actually took second in this group. Having said that, I'm going to have to give Astralis third. I believe in Sinners. I actually think Sinners are a very, very good team. I think... I think Oscar and Neofrag are incredibly good players, very high skilled, definitely enough to carry a team at this sort of level. And I actually think their team structure looked pretty decent as well at ESL Pro League. I expect this to be Heroic 1, Complexity 2, Astralis 3, but I really would not be surprised to see like any of these five teams potentially occupy those top spots. Now, moving on to Group C. Group C should be a pretty easy one to call in terms of first place. I think Vitality will take first place pretty comfortably in this group. Second place, I'm actually going to give it to Ents. I think OG haven't looked their best since their EPL group stage. They've lost all three of their matches since then. Granted, one of them was against Na'Vi, one of them was against FaZe, and one of them was against Vitality, so they are pretty good teams. However, they haven't really looked like getting too close in any of these series. The phase one is probably the one they came closest to, and even then they were pretty comfortably beaten on the final map. Mantu has fallen off a cliff, and I think Mantu is a huge part piece of the puzzle for OG to make them a top team. If Mantu can show up, OG takes second easily, could even compete for first. If Mantu doesn't show up, I don't think OG even get any RMR points, genuinely. So I have Vitality 1, I have Ents 2, and I actually have Mad Lions 3rd. That is how skeptical i am of og right now particularly because mantu's form has just dropped off a cliff and he is a very important piece of the puzzle for og as for ents i was very impressed with them at esl pro league obviously they made it out of their group and they did well in the playoffs they obviously made it through the first round of the playoffs they fell to navi pretty convincingly but i don't know what you expect from a team that's been playing lots of tier two and not so much tier one counter strike when they come up against the best team in the world that's going to happen but i actually have a lot of faith in ends to potentially do some damage at this event and the key thing is i think teams like vitality in particular don't need to get any points out of this rmr realistically so I think if Ents can squeak their way into second place and get out of this group and get into the playoffs, I think there are going to be some teams that once they have made the playoffs are going to be resting on their laurels a little bit because they know they've probably already qualified for the major. So I think Ents actually coming in as a very motivated squad who have no points in the RML standing right now. I think Ents could potentially be a dark horse and do some damage at this event. And obviously I've got third Mad Lions. I've got Mad Lions in third because they've been absolutely tearing up tier two ever since the player break. Waro 2k has been absolutely destroying teams, posting crazy numbers and ratings. I think they are a team that can do some damage in this group. I think Sprout are going to get run over. Dignitas are definitely a dark horse. They are a consistent and solid tier two team. I think they are lacking a little bit on the firepower from. I don't think you can rely on sort of Forrest to go nuts against tier one opposition. He's been doing really well and been their most consistent player at tier two, but I'm not sure that you can count on him in tier one. And then Halzerk, I find Halzerk to be a little bit inconsistent, a bit of a hit or miss player. And I think that's 
potentially going to be exposed even more in a sort of potential tier one setting where not only are Dignitas going to have to beat the likes of Sprout and Mad Lions to be able to do anything in this event, but they're also going to have to beat the likes of Ents, OG and Vitality if they want to take one of those top two spots. I just don't really see it for Dignitas. I think Group C is one of the most interesting groups though, and I'm very, very interested to see how it plays out. Now, moving on to Group D, I think this is an easy one-two phase nip three fanatic i think this group is probably the easiest to call i think unfortunately the teams outside of phase nip and fanatic are just gonna struggle to hang they're tier two teams they're teams that aren't like tearing up tier two and doing amazingly and winning tons of events skate have actually looked pretty decent in recent times they're the probably one team i could see potentially playing spoiler dbl pony do have the extra motivation of having some rmr points already and if they get out of the groups they're very very likely to qualify even if they just make third in the group and get some rmr points on the board i think it's very likely that dbl pony qualify so that added motivation might be enough if they can beat fiend if they can take a map if they can beat fiend and skade and then maybe just take a map off someone else in a best of one format dbl pony definitely have a chance but I think this group is probably the easiest to call in terms of phase or nip one two fanatic three but honestly you could kind of switch these three around i could totally foresee a scenario where fanatic finished top two i think that group's easiest to call so we're not going to linger too much on that one now this is what i expect the final iem full standings to look like when all is said and done um, it's difficult to predict exactly how the standings are going to shake out because we don't know the brackets for playoffs. We don't know who's playing who. Different matchups could totally change the predictions. I've kind of just gone based on overall team strength. I picked two I thought would go through each group top two. I picked two I would think would finish in third. So that's these four teams. So the four teams down the bottom are the teams that I expect to finish third in their groups and therefore play off for the ninth to 12th spots. I think this is fairly straightforward. I think we're going to get three pretty... I think we're actually going to get four pretty strong teams in this little playoff here. So I think it should still be interesting. Um, however, I don't expect any crazy shocks. Um, as you can see, I've not predicted any mental upsets, any crazy shocks, anyone to finish top 11 who maybe you wouldn't expect to finish top 11 originally. Ents is probably the only team that I've got some faith in that potentially other people would not put top 11. And if these standings do pan out, this is what the final RMR standings would look like for me. So these guys would go into the major as legends. These guys would go into the major as challengers. And these guys would go in as contenders. I think there's a couple of interesting things to note here looking at the final RMR standings. And the first thing to notice is the strongest... Oh, what's that doing there? The strongest teams at this event would end up, if they did finish where you kind of expect them, towards the top eight they would end up with mental amounts of points. And this is where I think it becomes very difficult to correctly predict where teams are going to finish overall, particularly once we get out of the group stages. I think it's a little bit easier to make some consistent predictions for the group stages. However, once the playoffs arrive and we get the playoff brackets drawn, A, the brackets, so who gets drawn against who, will affect predictions and such and might change what i predicted over here i might predict differently depending on who i saw in what playoff bracket and secondly a lot of teams once they qualify for the playoffs are going to know that they are mathematically already qualified for the major admittedly yes there is still seeding at the major to play for for a lot of these teams so there will be some motivation to place pi however i think for a lot of the teams particularly the teams towards the top sort of five if they make playoffs it's gonna be pretty difficult depending on who finishes where for teams to overtake them in the standings and such for example some of the teams down here like if ents make it towards top eight then there's not really any motivation for them to finish any deeper because they probably qualified and they probably can't make up the points difference unless they finish like literally top four top two to to get themselves into the challenger stage rather than the contender stage and then as you can see also here, this is depending on my predictions, there is another kind of big like 500 point gap here, which you need to swap quite a lot of places. You need to finish like three places or so higher than your opponent to make up that points gap. I think once playoffs come around and the mathematical scenarios start to become clearer and we can start to put some scenarios together, it's going to become a little bit wild as to who wants to finish where in playoffs, how deep you need to go to 
guarantee contender or to, to guarantee challenger or to guarantee legend. Ultimately, the most important thing is just to qualify. I think qualifying for a later stage is going to be seen as, as icing on the cake. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you know the drill. And if you didn't, you also know the drill. Catch you next time, guys.